Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. This week's video is the last video in a three-part series of how to create a WordPress website from start to finish. So in this week's video, we're gonna finally customize our theme and we're gonna do that by going over the WordPress interface. We're gonna review the documentation that the creator of the theme provided us and we're gonna install and activate some plugins. So all of these things combined give our theme a more customized look and feel to being exactly how we want them. So last week's video, we got our ourselves some WordPress hosting, we created our own custom domain, we installed WordPress, and we even up loaded our theme so now we see the bones of it on our URLs. In the first video we chose our theme so if you haven't seen that make sure you go and check it out. We just go over some quick tips and tricks on how to reduce or eliminate risk when you're shopping for a theme and just starting out. So let's get started. As you can see I've got the URL right here that we saw last week after we signed up and installed WordPress. So this is where I'm going to log in so we can access the back end of WordPress. So this is where we can work all of our magic behind the scenes. So I'm just going to log in. And once I get in here I'm going to arrive at my dashboard. And your dashboard kind of gives you an overview of everything that's going on since you last logged in. It tells you any posts that were recently published, any new comments that you might have. Once we install a download uh, plugin, you'll be able to see how many downloads uh, you had in the last 24 hours and also in the lifetime of your download plugin. So that's really great. I use that all the time. Um, just kind of as an FYI, uh, let me close this right here. As an FYI, uh, I forgot to mention it last week. If you don't see the name of your your blog or your website right here you can change it by co coming over here to settings and then choosing general and then just type it in right here and once you save it it'll change it up here and this is a nice place also where you can add in your email address um, you can choose your time zone and your time format your date format and the other really important thing uh, to mention oh once you save once you change your name up here just make sure you hit save right here so these permalinks, if, uh, if you can click on this, so this is what is going to create your URLs as you create different posts if you do have a blog. So if you want the title of your blog uh, to be included in the URL that directs uh, users to it, over here I always make sure that I have post name selected just because if this is my hello world right here and I want everyone that's looking for hello world to find my post this is the right way to do it so it, WordPress does this by default which means nothing to anybody so make sure um, you change it to the post name right here and just hit save changes so that's really important okay so we're going to come back up to the top uh, so your posts this is where you're going to include all of your blog posts if you do have a blog or a blog within your website pages is where you'll add different um, pages to your website like if you need an about page if you need a contact page this is where you will create those pages comments kind of self-explanatory so you can see right here any comments that you have if you just hover over you can approve unapprove reply mark them as spam or just trash them if you want this marketplace um little widget guy over here uh it's actually a plugin and it comes with bluehost automatically and it's nice because it puts up a coming soon page on your website so if you if you've checked your website at all um without being logged into it you'll notice just kind of a landing coming soon page under construction page. And that's great while you're building your site um, if you don't want anyone to see as it's being built. But once it is built and you want everyone to see it, you'll get a little mention up here that says, um, right now your site's displaying a coming soon page. If you're all set, click here to make it live. And if you just click that, as soon as you click it, it'll make it live. So just FYI, once you click that, it goes away. There's no getting it back, which obviously <laughs> I clicked it, so there's no getting it back for me. So that's this little marketplace mojo dude um, for the most part he just tries to sell you things so you can totally get rid of him after uh, you're done with the coming soon page and I'll show you how to do that so appearance palette is really really important because this is where you customize a lot of things for your theme and for me I use widgets a lot and this is what's currently appearing in my sidebar so say I want a calendar in my sidebar as well if I click and just drag it in I can choose where I want it to appear in which order which is really great and it'll automatically toggle down and I can title the calendar I can um, edit any of these other 
fields as well. And if I choose to not have the calendar anymore, or any of these other widgets, all I have to do is click and drag and then they're gone. So that's really great. Okay, so before we get into plugins, I just want to talk about tools. So WordPress updates, not super frequently, but frequently enough where you should always, always have a backup of your site on file, especially once you start um, uploading a lot of content, you want to make sure you never lose that content. So a way to ensure that you don't lose it is to export your entire website. And it's really quick and it's super easy to do and there's no excuse not to do it, especially if you're ever updating WordPress. So if you come over to tools and just choose export, over here, just make sure all content is selected and then you can choose download export file. This will save an XML file to your downloads folder and you can place that wherever you want uh, on your computer. Just make sure you remember where it is because if anything were to happen, all you have to come over, uh, all you have to do is come over here to import and you can re-upload that file and then get everything back that you had before. So that's really great thing to have. Okay, so let's jump into plugins. I'm just going to talk very quickly about my three favorite plugins that I use. Uh, I've had great luck with them in the past and I would highly recommend them to anybody. So the first one that I think everyone should have, regardless of what your site is about, is uh, is an SEO plugin and it's actually the best plugin currently out there for improving SEO for your site. So all you have to do is type in WordPress SEO, which is really easy to remember and do a search. And it's this one right here, WordPress SEO by Yoast. So I'm just gonna click install, hit okay, and it's installing it and then I just need to activate it. So I'm gonna click activate plugin. All right, so I'm just gonna show you really quick what this does. So I'm gonna come over here to post and I'm gonna create a brand new post. So I'm gonna add new and I'm gonna make it, um, I need to use some lorem ipsum here. So let's make it Let's make it about coffee. So I'm going to click coffee up some just to generate some text. Uh, let's give me seven paragraphs. Generate. All right. So I'm just going to copy. Oops. Copy all of this. And my new post is going to be called um, Espresso Mornings. All right, so I'm gonna paste in all my text and you can see right here because we changed the permalink, now this is tagged, this URL for this post has the title in it, which really helps SEO. Okay, so if I come down here, this is where this plugin comes in. So we need to choose a keyword and the keyword can be, I would say one to three words. Um, so don't feel like it can only ever be one word because this, this is the keyword that you want when people are Googling. This is uh, the keyword that's chosen that you want to show up in the results for. So for this one, for example, I, maybe I just want to show up for espresso or um, I'm sure there's a lot out there about espresso. So if I choose a, just the entire title, espresso mornings. All right, and I'm also uh, for a designer. Let's just make this different than the keyword. Okay, so I'm just gonna copy this and this title is where you're gonna uh, plug in to this SEO title field. And then your meta description, you just wanna make sure that your keyword is always in your description. So I'm just gonna throw it in here just to make sure it's in there. And I'm just gonna grab this and say like, this is my description of what this post is about. Okay, and I usually always try and make sure um, that I don't go over. There we go, perfect. Okay, so now you can see this little gray dot right here. This is giving you a rating of your overall SEO just for this post. So once I hit save draft, now that I've plugged things in here, you'll see I have an okay rating. So you can see what you can do to improve your SEO by coming over here to page analysis. And you can see there are only 156 words contained in the, co in the copy about coffee. Um, so I'm just gonna copy and I'm gonna add some more here. And it's telling me I don't have images. Uh, that's really important. You always wanna have at least one image. And your featured image, which you can dictate right here, is considered an image for your post. So you don't have to actually have an image within your post if you don't want to. The other thing uh, that comes up quite often is having a subheading tag like an H2. And I can just make my own H2 tag here. 
And it's usually a really good idea to have um, your keyword within the H2 tag. So let me just do that. Mornings and let's just end it right here. Okay. Now you can see I've got an H2 tag and now if I hit save draft again, let's see if it changes. There we go, now we've got a good rating. This is as good as your SEO rating can get, but you can still improve uh, these other ones if you want. But I always make sure that I have a good rating before I publish any content to my blog. So that is the WordPress SEO plugin. Um, I wanted to take a little extra time with this one because it is so important for your blog to be, or your website to be found online. Okay, these next two plugins, I'm just gonna kind of breeze through pretty quickly. Um, the second one that I use, if you wanna offer downloadable content or freebies of any kind, this is the plugin that I would suggest using and it's called Delightful Downloads. And um, this is it right here. So I'm just gonna click install, hit okay and I'm gonna activate it. And once I do that, you can see now I've got a little tab over here for downloads. And if you, I click on that download, I can add a new download, make sure you create a title for it because that makes it a lot easier whenever you're inserting it into your posts. This is where you upload your file, so you can just drag it right in there. And then once you have it dragged in there, hit publish. This isn't going online anywhere yet. You decide when it's gonna go online. This is just publishing it to your backend so you have access to it later on when you're uh, creating your posts. So if I come back over here to posts, just to show you where to find it, if you're in, um, in one of your posts and you want to add a download that you just created all you have to do now this little button is here so if you click add download you'll have a list of all the downloads that you have published in the past and you can just click on the one that you want to use and you can insert it right into your post and it's really great because once you have it uh, inserted into your post and people are downloading right here you'll see a download count of how many times it's been downloaded and for me it really helps me tailor all of my freebies or extra downloads um, to my users because I can see what they're enjoying the most. So I can start creating items that are similar to that just so my users are getting what they enjoy the most. Okay, so that's the downloads plugin. The last plugin that I wanna show you is the related post plugin. And I'm gonna show you what it does just using my personal blog as an example. So for this recent post about topography, if I click on it and I scroll down, you'll notice that I've got you may also enjoy and here's five posts um, just to kind of keep readers engaged because if people have never been to my site before and they really enjoyed this post I want to offer them other content that's very similar just to keep them um, sticking around a little longer just seeing everything that I have to offer and then maybe they'll come back in the future as well so this has been proven in the past um, that it does retain users uh, it's one of the best tools for retaining your visitors Okay, so if I come over to plugins, I'm going to choose add new plugin and this plugin is called WordPress related posts. So I'm going to search for that and it is this one right here, the first one that appears. So I'm going to install it, hit OK. OK, and then I'm going to click activate plugin. And you'll see it's right here. And if I click on this related post tab link, uh, this is where you choose. So for over here, I've got you may also enjoy. Uh, I just think that that's a little uh, nicer than more for my site. Although more for my site is totally fine too. Um, you could put um, check out these related posts. And then you can choose how many you want. And for me, I did five and then you can just hit save changes. And once you have enough content on your site, then you'll start noticing um, that area populate with posts that are related. Nothing's gonna show up right now just because I don't have any content on this blog, but that's how you can use that one. So the very last thing that I wanna go over about customizing your own site is referring to the documentation that the creator of your theme uh, provides. And you can get to it by coming over here to your downloads. And if you remember from the last video, we only downloaded the installable WordPress file because that way we could just upload just that one file to uh, our WordPress hosting, and then we could have it up and running right away. But uh, we can get to the documentation by downloading all files and documentation. So if I do that, I'll open this up, and then all you have to do is come over here to documentation, double click on index. I think most all themes these days have a 
little localized uh, index file. So this is where you can check out if you are wondering something about how to add pages. This gives you information about how to do that. Any suggested plugins, if you noticed this whole time, um, I've had kind of this little alert right here telling me about other plugins that go really well with this theme. So these are plugins that I should download. Um, you get all of those kind of recommendations from here as well, this documentation. So a really great place to look if you're having trouble with anything at all. I would always refer to the documentation before you bother uh, the author of the theme. It saves them time and it saves you time too and you, you can feel better about figuring it out on your own. Okay, so that concludes the very last video in the series and I really hope you enjoy it. Uh, and if you did enjoy it, please subscribe. I post a new tutorial every single week. So I hope to see you back here next week.